Hello and welcome to another segment of Well With L. Today we're here to talk about stress and we're asking the question, is stress making you sick? It's no secret that everybody's got stress in their life. People are actually wearing their ability to manage their stress almost like a badge of honor. For far too many, being stressed is just a way of life. But it begs to ask, is stress making you sick? And just where is all this stress coming from? If you ask most people where their stress is coming from, they will say it's situational types of things like the job, bills, relationships, even traffic. But actually, stress can come from many different places, places that you might not suspect. In truth, stress is certainly situational, but it can also be environmental with allergens, mold, or even household cleaners can be causing you stress. Emotional stress is another big area. Things like being angry or fearful or worried or depressed actually create a stress response in the body. Structural stress is another big one for people. Poor ergonomics when you're lifting or sitting behind a computer all day long or spinal misalignment can cause a lot of stress on the body. Behavioral stress is another major area where stress is concerned. Not getting enough sleep or doing too much exercise, again, creates a stress response. And lastly, dietary stress. And I know nobody really wants to hear about this one, but if you have nutrient deficiencies, if you're out there doing a really strict diet, or you've got food sensitivities that you might not even be aware of, stress is there, even in your diet. As you can see, we can't really escape stress. And while all stress isn't necessarily bad, I mean, you could be planning for a vacation or maybe a new baby is on the way. Heck, maybe you even won the lottery. The truth is, too much of a good thing isn't necessarily a good thing. Anytime you're stressed, your body goes through what we call a stress response. You might know it as fight or flight. And it's just the way that we're wired. There's nothing that you can do about it. So that's something we'll have to accept. What your body is doing is gearing you to take action against the stress. And so different body systems jump into action. Your blood pressure goes up, your blood sugar is elevated, your respiratory rate changes, even your immune system begins to do different things. This is really all fine because again, it's the way that we're wired, the way that we're programmed. But the wiring is meant to only happen for short periods of time small stresses that occur, and then they're over with and all systems go back to normal. Unfortunately, most of us don't live, live lives like that. We live lives of constant chronic stress. So as you can imagine, if these systems are being altered, they might be in a constant state of being altered. And ultimately, yes, this can cause problems and it can definitely make you sick. So what are we supposed to do about it? Fortunately, learning some effective stress management techniques has been shown to make concrete health benefits. So before you get too stressed about being stressed out, here, there's the good news. Following some simple stress techniques can help both lower your stress and lower your risk for health problems. In the short term, you can do things like just focus in the moment. So much stress is caused about worrying about things that have already happened or things that are getting ready to happen. And guess what? None of that is reality anymore. So focus in the moment and don't worry about what hasn't happened yet or what has already occurred. You can also try to reframe your stress. See problems as an opportunity to do something new, do something different, or try to do something better the next time around. Also, developing an attitude of gratitude is a great way to deal with stress because sometimes we become so focused on the one thing that's got us stressed out, we forget about all the incredible things that are happening in our lives. In the long term, regular exercise, a proper diet, adequate sleep, even taking up yoga or meditation are wonderful ways to help you deal with stress. Now, you might not be able to move, remove all of the stressful things from your life, but you can change how you respond to them. Getting good at any of these approaches will take a little time and practice, but the payoff for both the short and the long term of your health can be substantial.
Welcome to Simply Delicious. Today we're going to make a cool, wonderful tasting salsa, strawberry cucumber salsa. And I know that might sound a little different to you all, but I promise you it's going to be tasty and wonderful, just like everything else we make here. So let's see what we need to have. Obviously, we need a few strawberries for this. A cucumber, not this much. They say a small cucumber, but somehow I don't know if they grow small cucumbers anymore. So a small cucumber, some strawberries. We're going to use a little bit of red onion, a little bit of cilantro, some lime juice, and um, whoop, a little bit of salt we're going to need for this also. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we want to do, make sure that our strawberries are nice and clean and washed off. And we're going to take the caps off of them and get them diced up. You can certainly, you know, do this ahead of time. You can have all of your stuff prepped and ready to go. So all you have to do is just throw it together when you're ready, mix it up, and make it happen. So you can use about uh, a cup of strawberries. So depending on the size of your strawberries, these are, I guess, pretty big. So we're going to use maybe five or six of them. Let's see how that works. And I'm just going to cut them up, dice them up. Not too big a chunk, but not too small of a chunk. And I'm just using a small serrated knife right now. Um, I love my chef's knife, but I think sometimes working with smaller fruits or vegetables, I just like to use a smaller knife because I have a little bit more control, I think, over what's going on. Knife safety is always important, so always make sure you are paying attention to what you are cutting. Don't get distracted. I have had some pretty interesting moments in the kitchen with a knife and I don't want to have one here on TV so I'm going to make sure that I'm being really careful with my knife and get my berries cut up. They smell really really good and if you are fortunate to be in an area where they have uh, strawberry fields where you can go and pick strawberries this is a great recipe for this time of year because it's strawberry picking time so you can go and get your own fresh strawberries don't have to get them from the grocery store and you can make your strawberry cucumber salsa. So, so far I guess that's just two strawberries. Looks like we're going to go ahead and use all five of the ones that I picked and see if that is enough for what we're doing here. Again, you don't have to make the chunks too big or too small. And this is a salsa that you can serve as a side or a dessert um, or you can actually pair salsas with different meats. Um, a strawberry salsa would probably go good with chicken. Um, so if you're grilling chicken or baking chicken a strawberry salsa would probably go really really good with that. Or it could be like a dessert salsa. No end to the things that you can do with good food. And be creative. Find some fun ways to use different foods, some unconventional ways to use them. All right, so that's probably not quite a cup. We're going to see here. Let's get that in our bowl. Not making too much of a mess. It looks really good and juicy. And you definitely want to make sure that you get strawberries that are nice and flavorful because that's really going to make your salsa pop with some great flavor. We'll just cut up these last two strawberries here. Taking our time because I want to keep my fingers. Because we got some big chunks there, but that's all right. This is our salsa. We can do with it whatever we want to do. That's the great thing about cooking is even when you try some of these recipes that you hear about on Simply Delicious, make them your own. Make them your own. Add some different flavors to it. You can try different fruits. Experiment. The kitchen is a great place to be creative and have lots and lots of fun. And it's really kind of hard to go wrong. So just give it a try. All right, so we've got our strawberries all diced up. And next, we're going to get our cucumber. Now, again, the recipe calls for a small cucumber. Obviously, this is not a small cucumber. So I'm going to use maybe about a third of this cucumber. So just going to give it a little cut. Make sure, again, that your cucumber is washed. And 
We're going to do the same thing with the cucumber. We're going to dice that up. I'm going to use my larger knife this time. My chef's knife. Makes me feel like I know what I'm doing. And I'm just going to cut that the long way. It makes my dicing easier and a little faster. And take my time and cut these into some nice diced chunks. I'm going to add that right in with my cucumbers in my bowl. And we'll get this one going. And I love when you keep the skin. A lot of people always want to peel cucumbers. And I guess depending on what you're cooking, that's okay. But I love when you keep the skin on foods because it really makes everything just colorful and it's almost like a nice little piece of artwork sitting on your table. And I think it makes it more appetizing. It just looks like something you just want to dig into when you've got all those beautiful colors sitting on your table. So we're going to do this last piece of cucumber here. I'm going to slice it in half again. And dice it up. And add that in. And this one last piece. There's a couple guys that didn't want to go. I'm going to slice that the long way. And again, this no rhyme or reason to, it's just the way that I do it. If you have another way of dicing, if you want to use a food processor to dice your food, no problem. Remember, this is your recipe. You can make it your own. Get that chopped up. All right. And as always, if you, you can change the ratio of things. If you'd rather have more cucumber, less strawberry, more strawberry, less cucumber, your recipe. So do what you need to do to make it work. All right, so we've got our strawberries and we've got our cucumber in the bowl. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of red onion. Now, as you can see, the red onions are pre-cut because I was crying, cutting them up, and I didn't want you to see me crying here on the show. So we're gonna add uh, maybe about uh, a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of red onion. Again, you can add more if you are a real onion kind of person. Next, we're going to add a little bit of cilantro. I always like to use fresh cilantro. It's really aromatic and just gives a nice flavor to things, but you can certainly use dried cilantro if you would like to. And uh, you just want to chop that up nice and fine. Watch your fingers. Always pay attention when you're using kitchen utensils. You don't want things to go awry in the kitchen. So we're going to chop that up. And I'm going to go back in for a second round. I'm going to take that leaf in with me. Because what I find is the finer that you chop the cilantro, the more aromatic and the more flavorful it becomes. This is actually true of a lot of different um, vegetables that you'll use in the kitchen. Onions are the same way. The more finely that you chop them, the more aromatic they become, the more they make you cry, but the more flavorful they are also. Garlic is another one that's the same way. So we're going to add in. That's probably a little, about a tablespoon of cilantro that we're putting in there. So we've got our strawberries, we've got cucumber, we've got onion, we've got cilantro, and now we're gonna take a little bit of lime juice. And everything is to taste, so it's okay if you taste your food. I always like to taste my food before I serve it to anyone, just to make sure it's doing what I want it to do. We're gonna, I'm going to use half a lime. This is pretty small lime, so I'm going to use half a lime. Get the juice out of it. Always remember when you're doing limes or lemons to squeeze the juice through your hands so that the seeds from your fruit don't fall into your, your dish that you're making. All right. Oh, that smells wonderful. Oh, I wish, wish you could smell that because it smells really, really good. All right, so we've got everything in there. I'm going to go ahead and mix it up. Look how beautiful that is. Just colors. It looks vibrant. It looks like summer. It looks like we should be at a party right now, having a great time. Beautiful. And again, you can add more cucumber or less cucumber or more strawberries to it. This is great as a side to chicken or pork, if you like pork chops or even ribs, something like that for the summer. I'm going to put a little dash of salt, just a little bit. 
Salt sometimes will just bring out the flavor. Really just make it pop. Stir that up again. And there you have it. Strawberry cucumber salsa. Simply delicious. Today we are going to work that glute. So let's get started. We're going to get started doing squats. Now to do squats, we want to have our knees facing forward, feet facing forward. Never want to bring your knees over top of your uh, ankles. You want to make sure that your body stays straight. You don't want to lean forward or lean backwards. All right. So we're going to be here and we're just going to go straight down. Ready and go. Straight down. Almost like you're sitting in a chair. You can put your hands anywhere you really like to, on your hips. You can have them on your side. You can do this with weights if you'd like to, just to add a little more oomph to it, a little more complexity. But you want to go straight down and straight up again. Nothing too hard. Nice and easy and controlled. Make sure you're keeping your back straight the whole time. If you have to hold on to something, that's fine too. You can hold on to a chair or a wall. You should really be feeling it both in your glutes and in your quads and your thighs. All right, and from squats, we're going to move right to front lunges. We're going to alternate again. You don't want to lunge too far out. So you're going to start with your feet together. We're going to step out with the right leg first. Step out and lunge and bring it back. Left leg and back. Again, if you've got to hold on to something for balance, that's fine. Don't want to go too far out, so don't overstep. Make sure that knee doesn't go past the ankle. And make sure you get a good lunge in. Really working those glutes, really working the hip flexors and front of the legs as well. This again, you can do with weights or without weights to make it a little more challenging. Do a couple more of these. Keeping your back straight, your core nice and tight. Always good to keep your core tight when you're exercising. One more. Okay, next we're gonna move right to deadlift. So we're gonna pick up our weights for these. I've got little three pound weights. You don't have to have weights if you don't want. Again, you wanna have your knees and feet facing forward. Weights right in front of you, bend over at the waist. And we're just gonna go straight from the waist. Straight down and straight up. You can soften the knees just a little bit if you want. But this exercise is happening right in this area. Straight down and straight up. Just like you're lifting something right off of the floor. Keep the weights hanging down. Again, you don't have to have weight if you don't want to. But the weights stay stationary. All the movement is right in the hip area. Straight down and straight up. Really excellent exercise for strengthening the lower back and definitely those glutes. Bet you can feel it in there. Pull it. Tighten up those glute muscles because we love tight glutes. Let's just be honest, right? All right. You are ready? We are going to get down to the real nitty gritty of it. So let's put our weights down. We're going to get down on our hands and knees and we're going to do some donkey kicks. <clears throat> All right, so down on your hands and knees, you want to have your hands below your shoulders, knees below your hips, and we're going to start with donkey kicks on our left leg. Leg's going to come straight up, heels should be pointing to the ceiling, and you're just going to lift. Make sure that your core stays nice and tight, your stomach stays nice and tight. You don't have to lift high, you don't have to go very fast. There's no rules, there's no minimum requirement, but I know you can feel that burn. These are excellent for glutes. 
straight up and down. Lifting like there's a string going from your knee to your heel, straight into the floor. And from here we're going to go to fire hydrants, still with that left leg. Arms still underneath of you, hips and knees still in line. We're going to do fire hydrants, lift the whole leg at the knee, straight up. We're really working the side of the glute muscle now. Again, it doesn't have to be fast, it doesn't have to be too high. You want to make sure that you're maintaining your balance, that your motion is controlled. I know you're feeling that burn. Only takes five minutes a day and you can look and feel amazing. Everybody's got five minutes. Straight up, controlled. Bring those knees back together. Then, we're gonna get ready to do the same thing on the other side. So let's switch. This time we're gonna be doing it with the right leg. Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hip. We're going to do the donkey kicks with your left leg, right leg this time. Knees, foot flex, and lifting that foot straight up to the ceiling. Really feeling that burn. Make sure your core is nice and tight. Always want to keep your core tight, your stomach tight. Because you can get a little bit of work out there as well. Feel that burn. Lower that knee and lift it straight up again. Take your time, control the movement, don't swing your leg. Really work it out, challenge yourself to keep going, even if you have to go slower. All right, and then we're gonna do fire hydrants on this side. So get your balance again. And here we go, fire hydrants with the right leg, straight up. Remember, you don't want to swing, but make sure that you have a nice controlled motion. Don't let that leg rest back down again. You want to keep it up. Bring the knees together, bring it up again. Feel that burn. Yeah, it's feeling good. Keep it going. Nice and controlled, keep your balance. Remember, you don't have to go too fast or do too much. Wherever you can do. Challenge yourself every time you do your five minutes. All right, we're almost there. Next we're gonna do glute drops. So for these, we're gonna sit down. You're gonna be, have your, up on your heels, your feet on your heels, hands behind you with your fingers pointing away from you. Really simple, this is almost like a break, but every little bit counts. We're gonna lift up. You're just gonna drop your glute down. Drop your glute down. Might not seem like a lot. When you come up, you can tighten that glute just a little bit. And having your feet flex really makes you work a little harder. So you're just gonna drop that glute. Keep it nice and tight. It's just five minutes out of your day. You still got so much more of your day. And I know you're really happy that you took this five minutes to commit to your well-being and to your fitness and to your health. Just a few more glute drops. And we are in the home stretch. All right, our last exercise we're gonna do are called hip bridges. We're gonna still be down, we're gonna lay down this time hands to your side, bring your feet in and apart just a little bit, maybe shoulder width, and you're just going to lift your glutes up off the ground and tighten, squeeze when you come up and bring it down. Again, a controlled motion, squeeze, bring it down, squeeze, and bring it down. Five minutes for fitness every day. No excuses. First thing in the morning, Five minutes before you go to bed. Commercial breaks between your favorite TV show while dinner's in the oven. Everybody's got five minutes to get fit. And I'm glad you took these five minutes to do it with me. We are almost there. Squeeze nice and tight on the way up. Just a couple more. 
We're almost there. Let's get one more in. Awesome. Roll over to your side and push up. Hey, guess what? You just got fit in five. 